Okay. We're going to start off with a discussion of parallelism, and uh, Chris Lamb brought this up. And we're, we're going to go through the scheduled ones that we have on the list. And then if there's other things that people want to talk about, we'll just we'll start talking about. This is a discussion. It's an interactive session. So he's going to start off with the issue, and then we'll talk about it. So just a little background on me. I'm not a compiler person. I'm not sure anybody here is actually a compiler person. But I come from a computer architecture background. So I design chips, ISAs, things like that. Specifically, I've been designing many or multi-core chips, lots of parallelism. Um, and recently in my work, uh, I happened to be tasked to do some compiler project management and ended up working with LLVM. Um, and so one of the things that I'm very interested in is given that my, my work takes me in a very parallel direction, is how the LLVM community is going to adapt to this era of multi-core general purpose architectures. And also with the adoption by a lot of sort of special purpose silicon companies here, they're probably doing homogeneous, heterogeneous, many core architectures, more than maybe eight or 16, maybe you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of processors, things like that. So um, LLVM, as sort of the IR language, doesn't have any representation of concurrency in it natively. Um, and one of the things that this, I mean, this poses a problem if, if we want to try and do optimizations that take concurrency into account. Um, so I wanted to really open up the discussion to see how the community feels about this, if you've had any thoughts about it. Um, I know a little bit about the discussion that the Java community went through recently in their revision of their memory model uh, to adopt some more, uh, I wouldn't say, how to describe it, some more uh, maybe just up-to-date semantics for some of their reordering that they allow in their memory model. Um, so I have some information about that on my laptop, and I've also got a little bit up here. Um, but I wanted to sort of kick off the discussion there with, you know, memory models, you know, load store reordering in, in light of synchronization and in many parallel threads running on potentially you know, shared memory, um, expressing, you know, fork join, concurrency, threads, that kind of stuff in LLVM. What kind of... Uh, Requirements do you feel there are? What kind of interest is there in attacking this kind of problem? Yes. So one sort of prepackaged set of requirements is the one that will be coming to us from the C++ standard committee as they standardize threading. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily want to go into all the details right now, but that's a big pre-existing set of requirements that we pushed on LLVM. Okay. Um, especially since the C committee is considering adopting a threading model basically following C++. Okay. Actually, I, I didn't know much. Is this the C++ OX stuff? Um, I believe it's under the camera. Yeah, I don't, I don't know a lot about that. Are you familiar about with that? Can you give a brief summary of the requirements? Um, it's it's basically being modeled after P threads slash Windows threads. Um, some uh, subset of those that is common. Um, and I don't know offhand enough about the memory model. Do you have a timeline for when it will come out? Well, it's an ISO committee, so it's... <laughs> it, it's OX, so... It's what? It's OX, so once it gets to 2010, it's starting to be like... It's too late. <laughs> there, there it's starting to be like... There is an effort for that to get resolved this year. So one thing is background. We've, we've had a number of discussions within LLVM about parallelism, and we've, we've come to a couple conclusions. One is that the LLVM part, you know, the IR and down, is really not going to support anything except the raw fundamental print, uh, primitives that are necessary. Okay. So you're never going to see fork join in LLVM. You might see something like an atomic, uh, you know, relay modifier, something right. like that. And, and those kind of things would be appropriate to add to LLVM. But everything else is higher. And and I, I kind of agree with that. Looking at the Java memory model, um, I looked at, at one of the cookbook pages that's up there about well, you know. If you're writing a, a JVM or something like that, and you want to map this down to one of these you know, ISAs out there, what are the constructs in the ISA that you need to use to map to the constructs that are in the Java memory model, specifically to do with atomic operations and memory barriers, so things like that. And so there's a lot of choices out there in the ISAs. And really, in this aspect, LLVMIR is a lot more like an ISA than sort of the, the higher level memory model itself. And so I think then there are probably three specific or two specific things that, that we should probably consider. One is atomic operations, and the other is uh, memory barriers. 
Uh, those could be split up into, you know, you could just have a very generic heavyweight sort of memory barrier, but I think LLVM, I personally think LLVM could do better than that and, and have, you know, more fine-grained memory barrier control representation that would allow you to map onto whatever constructs were in the, in the lower level X. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Are you, so you're not necessarily going to be successful, it sounds like, you know, it sounds like arguing that what we need are new LLVM instructions that that uh, provide threading uh, primitives and whatnot. But how would you argue that, that LLVM might need a more generalized memoization structure so that you could memoize um, things like that so that other passes might be able to take advantage of it as opposed to embedding it into the, I, the LLVM ISA, for example? Sure. Um, I think that that uh, there are places where where instructions could have extra attributes or things like that that might be uh, efficient at, at conveying specific information from the higher level, but I think we'd want to choose those pretty judiciously rather than you know, attributing the uh, the IR of the wazoo. Um, one thing that I, I think is also coming is that. Uh, you know, at least for my work, fine-grained parallelism, where you have optimizations on code interacting with synchronization um, at, a, at, a, at a level where you might want to do scheduling or optimizations, loop unrolling around synchronization, things like that, um, where it may not be appropriate to just model atomic operations as a function call or something like that, or memory barriers as a, as a, like an intrinsic function call, where you want to actually be able to Use alias analysis in conjunction with your synchronization and your memory barrier primitives to try and generate better code. I have two, two comments. Mm -hmm. um, one, one with respect to atomic operations. GCC has a bunch of new atomic operation built-ins in one of the recent compilers. I think 4.2 has it, but maybe it's 4.3. Um, mm -hmm. So that is it's 14. Okay. So I mean, that's a great place to look for prior work and supporting those transparently is good. Um, the other thing is that the, the representation of the information doesn't have much to do with how you use it. And so if you have an intrinsic to do a memory barrier, mm -hmm. you can still do alias analysis, you can still do anything you want on it. And um, I mean, just like memmove gets optimized and <laughs> things like that. So um, the, the division over what's an instruction and what's an intrinsic is actually kind of artificial. 